This is Twit. Uh, I saw a little tease uh, last week that something exciting was coming. Uh, and it's finally here. We've been talking about this for, it seems like, a year. Loop! You're in, it's been more than a year, Leo. Wow. It's, uh, it's been a Can long Can I time. sign up today? So, yes. Uh, if you have a Microsoft account, you should be able to just get right in. Oh, yay. It's and a uh, still. it does look, I mean, I'm just looking at it. Looks yeah. a little bit like Notion. Uh-huh. So you appreciate my tweet of today, which says, Redmond, start your photocopiers. <laughs> <laughs> because... <laughs> This thing doesn't look a little like Notion. It's actually kind of disgusting how much it they, looks. They like really that. made no attempt, in fact, to. Uh... No, no, it's it's bald faced, and I, you know I have to say I have a little bit of a problem with that, and I don't just mean ethically, although absolutely ethically. And I'm curious, actually, Richard, what you think about this? It's not a theory, but a mm -hmm. an, this idea, you know, that Microsoft has uh, several decades of productivity apps and services experience. They have. Billions of people who use Microsoft Office are familiar with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and or Outlook, yeah. OneNote, whatever. And this is a new way of doing things. This is a new way of doing things just like uh, Teams is a new yep. way of doing things. You know, uh, this new style of uh, chat-based uh, collaboration in that case and meet, you know, meetings and all that stuff. So rather than make this product something familiar to Microsoft people, they have made it not just familiar, but identical to Notion. And I should say, because we we should mention, there are dozens and dozens of Notion ripoffs out in the world. Sure. City and you know, many others that look and work exactly like Notion as well. But this is Microsoft, right? And so what do I mean by that? So one, one of the odd things moving for me from, like, say, Word to Lu uh, <laughs> Notion is... I type. Wow. And I want to make... They even duplicated the little box on the left that I know, you I click... Think I, what yeah, the hell? I just, I, I, that's thank you. That's my point. I, we're gonna get to that. So hold on one second. Okay, sorry. So one, one, oh one of the God. no, no. That's I know. That's what I mean. It's not. It's not a little bit like it's Notion. a direct it's copy. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a photocopy. Yeah. So when when you're typing text in Word and you say, "Well, I want this thing that I'm typing to be a heading," there's a you know there's a keyboard shortcut for that. Right. Or you can apply. You can use mo mo most people probably use the the toolbar there or whatever the ribbon. Um, I use keyboard shortcuts. What's the keyboard shortcut? Is it slash? No, it's Control Alt One for heading one, Control Alt Two for heading two. Oh, okay, that's a little different. No, that doesn't doesn't work in there. Don't oh, <laughs> don't oh. do it there. That, my my point is, it doesn't. So the way it works in Notion is you actually have to think ahead of time to do it. You can apply a style after the fact. It's difficult. You have to click that little box you were just talking about. But yeah. right. for the most part, what you want, like when I'm doing the notes, I keep saying like today. I can't stop this. When I'm doing the notes, I will think, okay, this is going to be heading, and I type slash H2. That's how you do it in Notion. You do it proactively. And then you type your heading, and you move on, and the next thing you type is text. It's fine. You can go back using that little box. It looks like a domino. And you click it, and you say it says turn into, and then you can, you, you know, so it's multiple headings. And there's no keyboard shortcut for this, right, which is my problem. I'm, uh, I like to keep my hands on the keyboard. So when you move to Microsoft Loop now, there is no version of what I just said for Microsoft Word in Loop. The way you do it is the way you do it in Notion. And I mean exactly the same wow. way. You type a slash, you get a choice of headings and what other options. It, it's it's a weird way to optimize a tool. I, I, maybe you know, Richard, when they made the original version of Teams, mm -hmm. was it literally designed so that if you were coming from Slack, it would be the quickest possible transition? I mean, it was, remember? it was pretty close. They had their, they had their own elements as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, it's, it's interesting that all of these things are just front ends to SharePoint. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Like, so just another, view, to, another SharePoint view in a way. This is right? the, uh, the man behind the curtain yeah. <laughs> is still is, SharePoint. Is yeah. Still SharePoint. yeah. Which is, Oh, you know, it's listen, this is, this is the white whale of uh, Microsoft. You know, let's make a friendly front end to SharePoint that yeah. actually works for everybody. Yeah, they yeah. would really like that. And I mean, and, I don't know how much time they've actually spent copying Notion so much as they, this is a very common visual metaphor these days, okay. right? That set, they, these set of symbols are, are pretty standard and so forth. The, the, if the alt keys surprise me, the, you know, yeah. how close it is is remarkable. I, right. It's just a question of, you know, what, I mean, I, know, I think Notion is a great product. Is it that big too. that they even know its name? I know. <laughs> 
Well, I'm looking at this and I'm saying they know more than they its know, name. They I think know they, its yeah. name. Guaranteed. I think they know how it was designed, yeah. how it was written. Yeah. How, you, know, yeah. you know, the point being that Teams only came into being when Microsoft failed to buy Slack. Like they right. knew they needed a conversational engine. They mm -hmm. they needed that capability. And so they tried to buy it first. And right. when they weren't able to buy it, then they had to make it. Right. Yep. And the big success of Teams, by the way, is that they vastly exceeded the capabilities of Slack and turned it into their most successful platform in forever. I can't even remember. Mm -hmm. I don't even, I'm not even sure what to point to, um, especially in the productivity space. Uh, you know, since the original bundling of products into something called Office, maybe. It's been a long time. Yeah, well, to try and displace Outlook as the sovereign app, like the sort of first place you go at the yep. beginning of your workday, not a trivial problem. Like, no, that's a, that's and not a something that block. happens overnight. Yeah, mm -hmm. but, this is the, but this is this parallel is, is perfect. Because when you look at Teams to Outlook and this notion that these things are going to coexist for a while, eventually the old people are going to die off, <laughs> you know, and Teams moves forward, right? Um, this is to, I would say, Office, the rest of Office, as Teams is to Outlook, right? It's this modern uh, content creation tool with real-time collaboration. Uh, and, you know, it's not, you know, we're not going to round robin Word docs through Outlook anymore. We're going right. to... We're going to do the stuff in here. And there's also that connection to the past. Sorry. Uh, the, you can also bring these components into other Microsoft's, sure. well, uh, Microsoft 365 apps. Let's say. This is the conversation I have with Stephen Rose on Run As a year ago when, right. when they were first talking about Loop with this, let's go meet the workers where they are. Yes. And, the, and the scenario he painted was I have a salesperson who's used to having a spreadsheet emailed to them each day with mm -hmm. the current product pricing and so forth. And now that spreadsheet is auto populated from SharePoint data. So you don't have to re-email it to him. He can open it's the live. same one each time. It's and It's live. a live document. Right. It just immediately populates. Now we could go look at that in SharePoint through or through teams like there was lots of ways to look at that same set of data but if yeah. it if it makes him happy that it's an a excel spreadsheet sitting in in outlook fine we'll meet you where you are this is also how sorry Leo, uh, how you kind of mix and match the old and the new I, mm -hmm. one of the disconnects with teams and outlook is that people who are stuck in their ways with outlook are stuck in their ways with outlook but this is an interesting way to bridge the past and the, you know, the new, right? Um, that you can say, look, well, you're still going to use a Word doc, but now there's going to be a, a loop component in it, you know, that's always updated. They clearly bit. took their own advice. This is the template gallery, bad idea brainstorm. And uh, number one in the bad idea is create an app identical to competitors. Uh, we, we, we can learn from the competition's strength, oh my God. use their weaknesses and build our own strategy. Oh. You, you so. picture a bunch of bros high fiving themselves at their intelligence <laughs> over that little bit of humor. Ha ha. And ha ha, we did know. it. <laughs> are you going to the yacht afterwards? I mean, like, seriously, guys, what? It, it's sad. So, how I, soon are we moving to this? As soon as possible, Leo. That's the thing. So, we're the, losing. Now, we should so tell you're people. Ready, right you're now, ready to run some SharePoint in your life. Is right now, we're saying, using uh, something tell you that why. looks similar, which is Notion mm, to, right. do the, uh, to do the show uh, rundown. And there's really yeah, no reason we shouldn't use Loop for this, right? Right. Well, then there are good reasons to use Loop, right? So we're already paying for Microsoft 365, so we're going to have no limits on sharing and uh -huh. that, different types of content. You have to right? pay for Notion to get um, some of those features. Yeah. Yeah. And and I, look, I'm, I am absolutely not against paying for tools that I use. I, I, please do not take it that way. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm already paying for this big hairball called Microsoft 365 that offers a lot of value. This is going to be another big part of the value for me. You know, whereas... For me personally, Teams is not something I like or use on purpose or need, you know, it's something I have to use for work or whatever, but I don't like it. Um, this type of product is something I do use. I use it in my personal life. My wife and I uh, have Notion notebooks, whatever they're calling, I don't know what they're mm -hmm. called, but we have, we we share things together this way as well. Uh, everything we're doing around our apartment here in Mexico, the, the home sale um, is all through Notion. And, um, but we also pay for Microsoft 365. And this right. is, is kind of an unfettered Microsoft ecosystem uh, centric version of Notion. So, now I yeah, I mean, I tried to sign up for the iOS version and you have to have a business account, right. yeah. uh, Microsoft yeah. 365, and your administrator has to enable it. Right. So we that's should, not yeah, the let's, case let's on talk. the, that's not the case on the web. That's so, right. Yeah. yeah. So let's actually talk about that availability a little bit. So, that there are three versions of the app that are available today uh, web and then the two mobile apps. 
the web version is open to everybody. So if you have a Microsoft account, you can get in. If you have a, what we'll call it's it's called a Microsoft Worker School account, a commercial account, your administrator has to go through some fairly complicated steps, by the way, uh, to allow that in the organization to some level, and then to allow certain people in, et cetera, et cetera. So yes, yeah, so uh, I believe. I don't know on the Android side if that's the same. I haven't even tried it yet because I was looking at it the other day and I couldn't get into anything because it was too early. Um, but yeah, it's very complicated on the commercial side. Um, it's not, it's not there's going to be a Windows native app, which I'm almost certainly like Teams will basically be a web app, right? Will be this app, but right. lo running locally. Um, so if you want to test this now, the easiest way is to, to use the web version. And the web yeah, I wonder if it great. won't just be a part of Teams, right? The, oh, the interesting. Team. Make it part of Teams. Yeah. Well, yeah. we're about to get a Teams 2.0. Like, by all indications, they're moving away from being an Electron app. Right. And uh, wouldn't be that much of a stretch to say, hey, we're the Loop stuff's here as well. Like, I That's really right. don't... My impression of Loop was never that it was an app at all, that it was just another interface over top of SharePoint that so, hooked into a bunch of different places. This is the interesting thing to me about Loop. Uh, you use this... Uh, the example of Stephen Rose with the guy with the spreadsheet. And yeah, uh, I talked to Brad about this. He has the exact same need um, where you're, you're talking about loop in, in the context of components that will appear inside of other apps or inside teams or whatever it might be. Um, there are two types. I, so far, it seems like two, there are two things you could be excited about that or the thing I'm excited about, which is a notion that is in the Microsoft ecosystem. I'm, I'm actually in a weird place where I'm interested in this app. Um, one thing it's, I haven't tried this yet. It would be interesting to me if I could write in this thing, by which I mean write news articles or book chapters, right. whatever it is. The trick, I mean, I could. The The trick is going to be the output. The trick is going to be getting the data out in perfectly formatted whatever. Yeah, right which is not it. what this is built for, right? Like, no, and that's the thing. So we'll see. You well, know, the real know. question here now is you say you look at Word, OneNote, and loop and say okay well how are these things different yeah uh, it's not well, the first time in microsoft's history there's been a lot of overlap <laughs> i feel right like yeah. loop is a unique kind of platform i mean it's well, not you wouldn't want to unlike word you wouldn't want to create a, a you know word documents well, in it novel but, or a short story i don't know i really? you know what i i guarantee i i really i i don't so one of uh, look I, we all have in my taskbar right now, I have four chat apps. Right. I have Teams, Skype, WhatsApp, and Discord. I also have, by the way, five writing apps. Actually, technically six, but I'm going to leave that last one for later. You know, Word, uh, Typora, Markdown Pad, Notepad, and Notion. Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, as a, from just a like a an efficiency standpoint, where I have to remember how to do things, you know, fewer things. It would be really neat if I could replace a few of those things, right? And put them all in one app, right? And is, well, is and apparently is the possible? one app is SharePoint. I mean, the only sin that OneNote <laughs> really had. I need you to stop saying that word because you're really putting a bitter taste inside <laughs> of this chocolate. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Jeff, Jeff Teeper standing right behind you, Paul. Right? Now. Yeah. No, it's but like, like actually, you're... the beauty of this is you're using SharePoint without knowing it. Isn't it? Exactly. That's the best way to use SharePoint. Yeah. Except <laughs> you, except for your poor IT guy. Although, admittedly, SharePoint Online is a lot less painful than yeah. an on-prem SharePoint. And isn't the IT guy well, happy if you're all using SharePoint backends? Isn't that good? <sighs> is an IT guy ever all happy? No. Right. The, <laughs> the upside to the SharePoint thing, if you're there, as opposed to OneNote. I mean, OneNote I can collaborate with, right? I can share a, a notebook with you. It's got limits. But the real right. problem is it's a file somewhere typically on OneDrive. The up the the reason to have SharePoint on the back end is that you already have the infrastructure for backup and for multiple access and for security privileges right. and right. for uh you know rights around access to information, tagging, so forth. SharePoint already understands all of that. And Why the would way, they try and reduplicate all that in in OneNote and other places when they have it in SharePoint? I think what you just described is the real reason this thing has taken so long to come to market mm -hmm. because the 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 really for all of the notion ripoffing <laughs> occurring here the real difference between these two products is everything you just said yeah. that this infrastructure exists it already exists it on, is mature 
Yep. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yep. Yeah. This is where they really kind of the thing we see is the tiny front end part. Yeah. You know, the big part is the, you know, the all part those back end pieces. Yeah. And that's why, you know, I felt like OneNote's been an orphan for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, they played with some different versions and so forth. But the biggest thing here was the isolated back end piece that it was just a yeah. file somewhere on OneDrive, largely hidden from you. I think, well, this is this happened to OneNote to some degree because remember in the beginning, the idea behind OneNote was don't worry about it. There are no files. Yeah. There are always files. Like, there's always files. <laughs> all, it's a lot. There are always files. Right. And, yeah. and the, but what was compelling, OneNote was the first tool that Microsoft made where it worked on your phone and it worked on your laptop and it worked yeah. on your tablet and it worked on your PC. I think the it same. literally was the first one, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 you know, way, you know, way back in those early days, we were collaborating over it where two of us would be in a meeting and we could each contribute to the same document. It's just that it never had, it, they never improved the back end. Like one note well, should and, have and snapped over top of shit. They made some really dramatic, uh, bad decisions uh, with one note that I think have haunted it for mm -hmm. a long, long time too. Yeah. But, well, it, it also was, it bought in heavily to the pen based tablet thing. Yes. And uh, which, you know, both guys who use it think it's great. You know, they really do. <laughs> <laughs> they get I'll together right here in St. Louis. <laughs> Back in, uh, oh, I don't know, 2005 when Microsoft was really pushing the tablet, I, mm -hmm. uh, I was stuck on a flight with a sales guy who, oh, uh, who folded it over, got his pen out, said, oh, this is so great. Watch this. I'm going to do a sales presentation. I can annotate it. You can see it. It's going to be amazing. That was the one guy, by the way. He probably that was the guy. That was yeah, the guy. found him. So everyone has, I assume, has read the Steve Jobs biography. It's one of the best sections of the book. The uh, the iPad and the iPhone exist solely because some guy from Microsoft ended up at Steve Jobs' birthday party when shut up about the tablet PC. <laughs> I'll show Steve you. Jobs went to work I'll on money and said, you. "Listen, we're going to kill this thing immediately. Do what you can." And yeah, that's why that's why that all stuff all happened. He couldn't stand it. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by ACI Learning. Accelerate your career with IT Pro and ACI Learning. Test your new skills in practice labs with real-world simulations, hands-on experience, and test preparation. Use the code TWIT30 at checkout for 30% off a standard or premium IT Pro membership. Check out go.acilearning.com slash twit to learn more.